I'd like to talk about the French contribution. Um, I, uh, p uh, people uh, nowadays may not appreciate how significant uh, that contribution was and how, um, how vital it was, um, uh, both in the decision to march to uh, Virginia, I think it was, uh, the French contribution was substantial, and in the eventual outcome at Yorktown and the, the importance of the French fleet to that outcome. Yes. The French had a score to settle. They uh, had uh, fought to the British in what uh, they called the Seven Years War. We call it the French and Indian War. And uh, the, uh, the, fr the French suffered a massive defeat, and more than the, a defeat, a national humiliation. Uh, and Britain uh, was able to uh, conquer many of their colonies, uh, most of New France, uh, in Canada today, in the West Indies, uh, and the French were, were compelled uh, to give up a large part of their empire. That way the French were spoiling for revenge. They suddenly saw an opportunity. It had begun to um, grow in their minds as they watched the American armies uh, fighting early on. They, the, uh, they, they, they thought at first that uh, this colonial rising had comparatively little prospect for success. And it was the, uh, the outcome of the Princeton-Trenton campaign uh, that persuaded them that something, uh, that there was a, a serious possibility that the, that the British could lose this war. Uh, and it was the Marquis de Lafayette who was there as a very young man who was witness to these events in Paris. And then himself, many of these young French officers decided that they would want to join the Americans, and he did. He was told to stay home. He was ordered by the king, ordered by his father-in-law. Uh, he was a man of enormous wealth, and he, um, what he did was to uh, subsidize, he bought a ship that, for himself and his friends, and then contributed very heavily to the American cause out of his own, own, own pocket, and uh, came to America, Lafayette, and fought in the, in the campaigns around uh, Philadelphia, then went back to France uh, after the Philadelphia campaign and persuaded the king to send a field army to America, with Rochambeau's army. Uh, and uh, it was from that decision that these, uh, these events followed. Another set of choices in Europe at the same time that Washington was making his choices in America. All of them were very close run things. Louis XVI was not sure that he really wanted to support a rebellion. Uh, and he uh, was very displeased with Benjamin Franklin. He was displeased that everybody in his court thought more highly of Benjamin Franklin than, the, than of the king. He even had a chamber pot made, and at the center of the chamber pot that the king used every morning, there was an image of Benjamin Franklin. Uh, and uh, but Lafayette persuaded him that this was something from which France could, uh, uh, could gain an enormous advantage by, uh, by, uh, by dealing with uh, recovering the, the losses of the last war against the English. This was part of a hundred years war between England and, 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 and France. Well, uh, th that, that um, leads us to your book, um, Champlain's Dream. I'll show it to the camera again. Um, of course, New France began um, in the early 1600s and Champlain was um, sometimes is sometimes called the uh, the father of New France. He founded Quebec. Yeah. Champlain was given a job. He was a secret agent of the king. He was sent to New New Spain, and he was his orders were to study how another empire worked. And he was horrified by the way the Indians were treated. And he was an artist. He came back with a portfolio of watercolors which showed what was done to the Indians in New Spain. He has an image of them being burned at the stake for heresy in the Mexican Inquisition and uh, being worked to death in the various, in the pearl fisheries and that sort of thing. And it was, he did a little report on how not to run a colony and they decided they would do something different in New France. And so off he went in 1603 on the orders of, of Henry the Fourth, and he the first thing he did was to meet with the Indians in the lower St. Lawrence Valley, and they had 
a meeting that turned into a tobacco feast, a tabaji as it was called. And at the end, Champlain meeting with a thousand Indians from the many different nations uh, made a kind of agreement. That is, they, they, the, the Indians invited them to settle. Uh, the land would remain mostly the Indians' land. And they would live in peace together and prosper in the fur trade. And they made it work. Uh, Champlain took a great interest in the Indians. He, there was not a hint of racism in the way that he thought about them. He had another vision. He, he, he told a group of Montenay, he said, I have a dream. My dream is that our children will marry your children and we will become one people. And with his encouragement, this happened. And there were, he founded the, the, the settlement of Quebec, the settlement that, was, that he called L'Acadie, uh, Acadia, uh, 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 now Nova Scotia. And then he founded another group who were called the Métis, the mixed people, but developing by a process of Métissage. And they all began to grow during his period of, of activity, which was 1603 to 1635. And at the end of it, there were three populations growing, all Francophone, but they spoke different forms of French. Uh, and one of them were these Métis. And today, every 10 years, the Canadians have a census. And every Canadian is asked to identify uh, uh, his or her uh, ethnicity. And about a million Canadians say, I am Métis. I am part Indian, part French. And, and that's only a fraction of this population, all descended from this humanist impulse, it's an idea of humanity as distinct from the liberty and freedom. He had no idea of liberty and freedom. He described liberty and freedom as what he called contemptuously. He, said, he called it la vie anglaise, the English way, the English life. He thought it was a form of licentiousness and chaos. Uh, and he was very much of a top-down, monarchical sort of person. But within this system, Indians and French lived together, and that, it worked. And uh, it was, there were two different ways that were planted in North America. And most of my work is about how small beginnings make a big difference in the history of great nations, in the revolution, in these first boundings. That was what was going on with, with Champlain and his uh, dream of a new world in New France.